recently GoPro released their labs update. This is a beta software that uh, actually contains quite a number of new features. So in this video, I will explain how to install the update software. And also I will take one or two examples to show once the software is installed, how you can uh, utilize the new features provided by this update. So to get the software, the easiest way to do that is simply to go to the GoPro website. That will be gopro.com. Here's gopro.com. Once you get to the, uh, the main website, you go down and then you will see GoPro support. Click this link and you will get to the uh, GoPro support hub or support page. Once you get here, you look at the right side menu, which includes this GoPro Labs option. From this link, it will take you to the GoPro Labs area, which has all things related to the labs, primarily a place for some cool updates, questions, answers, and so on and so forth. From here, you simply click this get started area. Once you click that area, you will get to the introducing GoPro Labs, some text. Now, the most important part of this page is you go to where the software link is. So depending on your GoPro version, you should choose the correct software. My camera is Hero 9 Black, so I will choose this. Now, it is very important that uh, you go by the, um, I guess, the simple way to save this zip file and then expand the zip file once it's saved into your system. Uh, in my case, it's a Windows system. And once you uh, save that on the hard drive, you then proceed to expand or uncompress the zip file and make that into a directory called update onto the micro SD card. So here, uh, once the file is downloaded to your computer's hard drive, you can then uncompress and um, transfer the files onto your micro SD drive. So in this case, you can go to the file and right click and choose extract all option. So once you are here, you go to browse. So in my computer environment, I simply go to computer and E drive. I currently have an E drive that's named Sentry. From here, you can extract. This process will extract or uncompress all the files under this update directory to your micro SD drive. Now this is using this particular method with a right click on Windows. If you use some other programs to uncompress the files and then to transfer the files and its folder, which is named update onto your SD card, then you need to make sure you follow the file name convention because apparently GoPro uses a file system that is case sensitive. So in this case, the update folder is all caps in the folder name. So you need to make sure the destination, which is your micro SD card, should also have all caps update folder name along with all of the files under that folder. All right. So once this process is completed, you will then see this folder on your micro SD drive that's update, which also has three files. So these are the three files under that update folder. Now this update folder needs to be under the root directory of your micro SD card. Once this transfer is completed, you can then insert this card into your GoPro 
camera. Then you turn the camera on. Once the camera is on, you will see this sort of download sign and the camera will flicker for a couple of times on and off. And after that, it will show update complete. After that, the camera simply will turn itself on as usual, which concludes the update process. The next time when the camera is turned on, you will see this message after the update, which reads, GoPro Labs Beta Firmware Participation Terms Apply. The designation of Beta Firmware indicates certain level of experimental nature, so use it at your own risk. The way GoPro implements these new features for this update software is through the QR codes which basically means using the QR codes to reconfigure your camera's settings in order to obtain the new functionality. Earlier, we used this Hero 9 black link to get the update software. But from this same page, we can go here, that is instructions for using the QR code feature. So you click this link and you get this page, the QR codes for camera control. From here, you can go to QR codes, the basics. So this is the, um, the first example of using the QR code. That is, if you point your camera to this code, then it will show the um, URL of gopro.com. But for today's purpose, let's go to this example, that is to set your camera's date and a time. You can manually use the back screen of your camera to set the date and time, but uh, the time precision can only go down to the minute. But when you use the QR code, then you can get the very precise time down to, uh, I believe, one hundredth of a second. So here we can, um, this actually is the real time running. So let's point the camera to the QR code. You see here? So your GoPro camera responds by accepting the time at that very moment. Now this is very important if you have like a multiple cameras and you want all the cameras to be in sync with the same time. So this is the first example of using the QR code to configure your camera. Here is an example of using the QR code to do the delayed actions. So we go to this option, uh, which is below the, uh, the user ID or owner's information here. So you uh, from this same page, you go down to create delayed actions. And then here's the link. That's a QR control customizer. So you click this one. And this goes to uh, display all those options that you can do, but uh, uh, in most cases, the way I do it is I set up the camera uh, with what I need, and then I just use as much kind of a default that is not set option. But then here, you see the QR code? If you do this, basically nothing will happen. But then if I click delayed actions, and then you see there's a whole bunch of things that you, you could do. But what I need is, um, tomorrow's a Sunday in the Washington DC area, uh, there will be, uh, in fact, they say heavy snow. 
So I'm going to do some uh, uh, time lapse video probably throughout the day just to see how uh, snow accumulates. So here what I need to do is I will see this option based on the time you choose. The camera will automatically shut down and automatically turn on when the defined time comes. So this is especially good because I want the camera to start shooting before sunrise. But then, so here you can set how many minutes after sunrise, uh, but before you just do a negative number. So I figure uh, if it's too early, um, probably it's too dark for the camera to capture anything. So let me, actually, let me just set to be half an hour before sunrise. So we do minus 30, all right? So hopefully there by then is already some snow. So because of the bright uh, background, maybe half an hour before sunrise, there's already some kind of lighting enough for the camera to capture some snow actions. So uh, for this purpose, this is the only thing I need. So then let's go to, oh, just to show the difference. So if I delete this, notice the QR code. See the QR code changes accordingly. So let me again do minus 30. So we're going to let the camera automatically turn on half an hour before sunrise. Of course, the sunrise information is pulled based on the time and uh, GPS location. All right, so let's, uh, let's do that. Let me get my GoPro ready. And we're going to get this QR code. You see there? So uh, it's taken the QR code and it's going to shut down the camera, right? So uh, from this point on, I can just get the camera ready uh, on the tripod, point to the outside for tomorrow morning snow to come in. The snowfall actually came during daytime in the AM hours and the amount was also a little bit less than expected. And that caused my recording to end at uh, roughly noontime instead of the whole day. But the ability to automatically start recording really provides a convenience, especially uh, in the cold winter when I myself don't want to get up early to operate the camera. So there it is. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you.